Before my mom passed away, she gave my dad strict instructions to water the plants in the bathroom. He's been religiously watering them and keeping them alive. They look so amazing, he decided to take them to his new home, only to discover they are plastic. <laughs> Can hear my mom chuckling. Oh, that's beautiful. What's up, sexy? I'm Lexi, and welcome back to MK. You know, with it being 2020 and all, I think we could all use a little more r slash made me smile. So let's dive right on in. I gave a little kid some frozen yogurt today at work, and his mom says, okay, what do you say? And he looks at me in the eyes and says, I love you. Visible happiness. <gasps> Sorry, puppy, very cute. Just doing the arm a hug. I just ran through my house to find my phone because I've never seen the boys in my neighborhood do this even in the 10 plus years I've lived here. <laughs> That's kind of adorable. Birthday girl begs dad to wear a mermaid costume and the photo shoot is priceless. Best dad, best dad right there. This is how you parent. Found out my 11 year old daughter is gluing my lunch bag notes inside her school binder. <laughs> Oh, this is adorable. I mean, I save a lot of notes and stuff from people. I don't know why, I just always have. I still do. I have a giant box of just notes that I've gotten from other people. But this is really cute. A Californian care home went bankrupt. About 16 elderly residents were abandoned. Most staff left, but the janitor, Miguel Alvarez, and the cook, Maurice Rowland, stayed behind to care for the residents at their own expense. Wow, man, the two of you are better than all of the staff combined. Also, how is that legal? Like, how how is it legal to, like, uh, just abandon people? Heard my six-year-old slowly and painstakingly read a Nat Geo book about otters to his stuffed otter because I wanted him to know about his family. Oh my freaking god, sometimes, okay, okay, sometimes kids do adorable stuff. Wife, we just ate. Why are you making pancakes? Me, they're for the dogs. Wife. Why are you making pancakes for the dogs? Me. Th they don't know how. Oh. <laughs> Iowa school gives PE credits for students who do yard work during pandemic for elderly and people with disabilities. Yes, actual freaking work being done instead of just like running around a gym. I so approve of this. This should be a thing outside of the pandemic. After years of taking pics on the side and being dad, I have my own studio. It's not much, but it's mine. <gasps> Good job! Oh, that's super awesome! Oh, best of luck. I hope, I hope everything goes really well for you. My mom sent me this picture of her and our family dog showing their pride. It made me smile to know that they support and love me and the LGBT community. <gasps> Puppy! Oh man, I need to get a rainbow rainbow thing for uh for Freya. I already have her a bunch of handkerchiefs for her. I need a I need a rainbow handkerchief and a trans pride handkerchief for Freya. And this is adorable, and I, I'm your family's freaking awesome, and that's lovely and amazing and awesome. I am a professional. Class expectations. If you're watching TikToks during class, please at least drop links to the really funny ones in the chat. <laughs> I don't care if you are wearing pajamas or not, but please wear clothes of some kind. <laughs> class materials. Bring your brain to class at least 50% of the time. Your dog is not class material. I still want to see it on camera if A, he's in the room, B, he's a good boy, yes he is. Hi, hello, yes, Joe Miliano, I, I'm not in school anymore, but can I take one of your classes, please? I promise you can still make a beautiful life for yourself, even if you lost many years of it to abuse, mental illness, or trauma. I personally relate to at least the first one. Uh, yes, yes you can. From Nana. Mom just finished this beautiful quilt at 93. Wow, that is amazing. Really well done, Grandma. A Kenyan lady found her childhood friend on the street suffering from drug addiction and took him to rehab. Look at that. He looks so much better and so much happier. Oh, well freaking done. I'm in remission and I got my port out. I'm so excited. Yay, congratulations. Also, your mask is adorable, but I'm so glad you are now fully in remission. For many years, I pitched science shows to large science networks and it was an unsuccessful. I would receive the feedback that the majority of our audience is male, so we just don't know if they'd relate to a female host. But last year, Netflix picked up our science show, Emily's Wonder Lab. I filmed the entire thing nine months pregnant, so there is now a female-led science show on the biggest streaming platform in the world, hosted by a pregnant woman, available worldwide. I'm just so incredibly proud that my daughter will be able to watch this someday. When I was studying to become an engineer, I was one of two or three women in the classroom of 50 men. 
I'm hoping shows like this help change that demographic for her generation. This is amazing. I need to look this up if it's like already released or not. This is gorgeous. Great freaking work. Mom tells boy he can pick any animal at shelter. He picked this elderly, overweight, and shy cat. Oh, well, imagine the hugs though. Imagine the hugs. The vet suggested a shirt instead of a cone for my cat. Fun fact, most cats wear baby size zero to three months. Yo, that, that that's really freaking sharp. He looks incredibly sharp. Pissed off, but also sharp. Also, the guitar kind of fits into this mix, and I don't know why, it just fits. My dad, who didn't want a cat, showing Lucas every item of the weekly shop because he wants to see what we've got. Oh my god. <laughs> It's always the ones that don't want a pet. Dear teenage boy at skate park, you're probably about 15 years old, so I don't expect you to be very mature or for you to want a little girl on your skate ramp for that matter. What you don't know is that my daughter has been wanting to skateboard for months. I actually had to convince her that skateboarding wasn't just for boys. So when we walked up to the skate park and saw that it was full of teenage boys who were smoking and swearing, she immediately wanted to turn around and go home. I secretly wanted to go too because I didn't want to have to put on my mom voice and exchange words with you. I also didn't want my daughter to feel like she had to be scared of anyone or that she wasn't entitled to that skate park just as much as you were. So when she said, mom, it's full of older boys, I calmly said, so what? They don't own the skate park. She proceeded to go down the ramp in spite of you and your friends flying past her and grinding rails beside her. She only had two or three runs in before you approached her and said, hey, excuse me. I immediately prepared to deliver my, she's allowed to use this park just as much as you guys speech. When I heard you say, your feet are wrong, can I help you? You proceeded to spend almost an hour with my daughter, showing her how to balance and steer, and she listened to you. A feat not attained by most adults. You held her hand and helped her get up when she fell down, and I even heard you tell her to stay away from the rails so that she wouldn't get hurt. I want you to know that I am proud of that you are part of my community, and I want to thank you for being kind to my daughter, even though your friends made fun of you for it. She left with a sense of pride and with the confidence that she can do anything because of you. The history behind this picture is really interesting. The reason that everyone always looked miserable in old photos wasn't that they took too long to take. Once photography became widespread, it took only seconds to take a picture. It was because getting your photo taken was treated with the same as getting your portrait painted. A very serious occasion meant so that your descendants would know that you existed and what you looked like. But one time, some British dudes went to China to go on an anthropological expedition, and they met some rural Chinese farmers and decided to take their pictures. Now, these people weren't exposed to the weird culture of the time around getting your photo taken, so this guy just flashed a big grin during the photo because he was told to strike a pose, and that's the pose he wanted to strike. Dude, he's having way more fun than any of us were in the 1900s. I didn't think my dad ever paid attention to all the random Pokemon facts I would tell him. I guess he actually did. Oh my god, oh my god. Is that Snorlax? You need a flute to move him. <gasps> that's adorable. In 1968, I heard Ben E. King sing this song at a small club on the coast of South Carolina. King had a small band of three or four guys, and I can still remember the single violin. The venue was not air conditioned. I was 18. The girl I was with was 17. 52 years later, we are still a couple, and I still love this song. Oh, that's adorable. Students and teachers have read it. What's the best forgot to turn off the mic story during virtual learning? Well, it happened in one of the classes. The teacher was going through a rough time, and the class could feel it. We assured her that we had done our homework and that she could take rest for the time being. She agreed and told us she would switch her mic off and sleep for a while as we did whatever. Her husband was right beside her and the mic wasn't turned off. She said, I am so lucky to have these students and started sobbing to her husband. We all heard this but kept quiet to prevent her being embarrassed. She slept well during that time, and we sent her a thank you gift collectively. Y'all, y'all are the best freaking class. Like, holy crap. That just, that just warms my heart. That makes me so happy. Meet the 104 year old man with more style than most people will ever have. Seriously, my 
God, he is dapper. Wait, 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 wait. Is this in New York? No, I don't think it is. I'm sad. But, oh man, I want to meet this guy. That's, oh, whoa. How are y'all doing this with like a mouse and MS Paint? My God, if he's that accurate with a mouse and MS Paint, imagine him in like Destiny. For the first time in over six years, I have a full set of working teeth and a smile I don't have to hide. No more oral surgery, no more pain from broken teeth. I can bite things now and chew them. The first carrot was amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Congratulations. As somebody who was born with exceptionally fragile teeth, I fully appreciate this. There's a man in Starbucks holding a bound stack of papers, like you print at Office Depot, and he's proudly and loudly telling the couple near him that he's reading his daughter's thesis. She just graduated with a master's degree. Historical preservation. It's so cute. This, this, this right here. This is how you parent. Today, you could be standing next to someone who is trying their best not to fall apart. Whatever you do today, do it with kindness in your heart. I don't know which came first, but I'm very glad that the tree, like, is growing through the fence now. Just like, I live here now. I had this girl in my class, and she was considered to be, like, really dumb. She'd ask a ton of questions in class, which everyone would consider to be stupid and silly, and even the teachers would often taunt her. But she'd never stop asking. The weirdest thing was that she almost always aced the class exams, and everyone was like, huh? Even the teachers thought she was cheating because she wasn't so smart in class. But nobody could prove that she was actually cheating. I'm pretty introverted, so I never really talked to her. But she was leaving school this year, and I was genuinely curious about how she did so well on exams, and how she didn't let everyone's remarks and doubts affect her. She always used to sit and only hang out with one girl, and she told me that the friend of hers was severely socially anxious, and had difficulty in class because she couldn't bring herself to ask questions or ask for help from others. I felt that way before myself. So they had this system where during lectures, her friend would write down any questions she had and she would ask them for her. And I was just so touched. I don't know, but like it really changed the way I looked at people. This girl endured taunts and accusations and borderline bullying for being quote unquote stupid when she was actually really smart and could easily have refused to ask questions for her friend, but she did and brushed off everything others would throw at her for her friend. Do you have friends like this? I hope you do. I think it's so important to have support from people who don't shame you for your shortcomings, who help you during hard times and don't embarrass you or leave you hanging, even if they could. And trust me, most people could. I do have one amazing friend like this. It is the Lexi wife, and she's the one who talks to anybody that I'm ordering takeout from. Reasons why I'm polite to waiters. Because I realize they're human beings trying to make a living, not my servants. Be nice to your waiters. Tip your waiters. If you can't afford the tip, don't go out to eat. No tipping shouldn't be a thing, but it is, so make sure your waiters are, you know, actually compensated. My son, who was told from birth that he may not ever be able to walk or speak, not only walked across his high school graduation stage, he also walked down the aisle as the ring bearer in his mentor and caretaker's wedding. Look at that dapper gentleman. Oh, that is fracking rad. I'm so glad you were able to do that. She said, I haven't been carried like this since my wedding day. <laughs> Amazing uh, for, you know, having a, a sense of humor in, in what is objectively a terrifying situation. Most of you know I tragically lost my wife 2.5 years ago. Tonight, I walked to my house to find my now fiancé and my three-year-old daughter making cupcakes and having a karaoke party celebrating Kylie's heavenly birthday tomorrow. I found a damn good one, I tell ya. Grown men do cry, trust me. I was exercising on my balcony and someone that was stopped at a red light got out of their car and started working out with me. We did jumping jacks, pointed at each other, and laughed. He got back in his car and drove off. That was the most human connection I've had in 17 days. I think the only, only freaking good thing that has come out of this stupid pandemic is every once in a while you see a bit more humanity than usual. People, people don't take each other for granted and people, you know, genuinely try to find a little bit of solace in the silliest forms of camaraderie. Two years ago, our cat, Kira, had an allergic reaction that turned into a wound on her back. She scratched and licked it and every time she would cry out in pain. The wound got worse, so the vet told us to get a, her a cone or make her stop touching the wound. Needless to say, she hated the cone. She couldn't properly walk in it, was fed up with the entire situation, and she could still could scratch her back with her claws. So the cone was more than useless. My brother couldn't watch her suffer, so he came up with the idea to make her a little jacket. He got some bubble wrap, 
made a few holes in it for the wound to breathe, and I sewed it to Kira's harness. The vet was amazed by what he did, with a little help from me. Kira couldn't touch her wound, and a few weeks later, she was healthy and furry as ever. And that's the story about my brother inventing a jacket to help our cat get better. That's actually a really freaking good idea. I really like this. And that brings us to the end of another heartwarming and slightly teary r slash made me smile. If you enjoyed these warm fuzzies, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want some more wholesome deliciousness in your subscriptions feed, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. My name is the Lexi Kitty, but y'all can call me Lexi. Have an absolutely victorious day tomorrow. Stay safe, stay awesome, make more stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.